Do you remember why you started out on this journey to find your Hebraic root? Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10-Minute Torah, day number four of Torah portion, Matot Masay, a double Torah portion, after which we conclude the studying of, we end and finish the book of Numbers, or Bamidbar. So let's go to the Masay portion that begins in chapter number 34. Masay means journeys. It is here that we began to study about the various places and incidents that conclude the journeys of going through the wilderness and actually arriving at the border to enter into the land of inheritance. When you and I started out on this Hebrew root journey, we left, many of us, where it was that we were, having determined that there has to be more than this. The question is, at this point, for many of us, years later, have we found the more than this? We may have gained knowledge. We may have gained the understanding of information. But have we found what we're looking for? So let's go back to the beginning of the book of Numbers for a moment and remember that Bamibar, meaning in the wilderness, was an intentional journey that Yah gave this ragtag group of former slaves out of Mitzrayim in order to transform them into Am Israel, the nation made up of covenant people destined for inheritance. So they had become disconnected from the Elohim of their fathers. They needed to find him again. I think we need the same. They had to be counted. So Yah says, let's take a census. More than one was taken in this book. They needed to be organized. So they were given their tribal identities and they had to acknowledge who their leaders were. They were shown how to camp together. They needed to move as a nation, so they learned to follow the cloud or the pillar of fire, and silver trumpets were made that they may be sounded and give attention to the time to move and to call to leadership. They needed to learn about sanitation and disease and the effects of the shanhara or evil speech. They needed to learn about the division that was taking place among themselves. They were given a set-apart priesthood, and this priesthood was to instruct them not only about the Torah, but about the actions of worship and the keeping of the Hamuadim, the days or feasting days of Yah. They learned not only about these things, but they also learned about Yah's judgment, not only his judgment upon their adversaries, but also upon themselves, those times where they acted in rebellion, were stiff-necked and unreprovable before him. He showed them who held power. They complained about manna and about the lack of the foods that they enjoyed, quote-unquote, of slavery. So Yah gave them quail until they choked on it. Twelve men were sent into the land to look it out to find the best ways to go up. Two came back with a belief report saying, let's go get it. Ten men said, can't have it. The giants are there. We'll never take that land. It's useless. It's hopeless. They died. The plague breaks out. And Yah's people wander around in a wilderness until an entire generation dies, taking 40 years. Miriam Aaron thought themselves the equal to, or maybe even the better of, themselves and Moshe. Yah had to teach them a lesson that he preferred Moshe even over them. Korah got his feelings hurt, <coughs> thought he was left out, overlooked, started his own congregation, raised up his own mishkan and a means uh, or a manner of understanding, Yod said he didn't like it, opened up the earth and swallowed the whole congregation and burnt the rest with fire. Zimri thought it a wise thing to start a new doctrine where women of the world were considered acceptable, preferable, 
and that it, because it was a natural thing to want to court a gorgeous woman and eat meat at a table feasting to a false idol, that it can't be a sin. Yah showed him what his opinion of that doctrine was. Zimri, Casby died. A plague breaks out. 24,000 men die. I think they got the message. How hard, how rough, how, how aggressive does Yah have to treat his people or respond to his people in order for us to have our eyes open and understand that for all of our learning, we haven't learned all that we really need to learn. We have some things that we need to learn. You would think that with all these instances, plus plagues of death from pestilence, fire burning on the outskirts of the camp, serpents biting people with fiery pain, the death of an entire generation, that that would be sufficient for people to get the understanding. Yah's not playing. He's extremely serious about our walk with him, and he's looking for people who are outstanding fully committed, righteously upright and walking before him according to the covenant that he's offered and looking forward to entering into the land and believe that the land belongs to them. Yah has done everything necessary. He has split the sea. He has drowned their enemies. He has provided for them in the wilderness. They've had food to eat, maybe not of their first choosing, but manna is a miraculous food. If you're hungry, he will feed you water flowing from a rock, mostly to teach them, guide them, and show them the way. A magnificent setup of worship in the Mishkan complex to encounter the Most High, the miraculous vision of the cloud and the pillar on a daily basis. They have heard the very voice of the Creator himself. There's a lot of things that have been powerfully accomplished. How? Could they doubt and walk in unbelief? So we come to the land. Who gets the land? When we read the second verse of this Torah portion, well, let's begin with verse 1. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe saying, verse 2, Command the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land of Canaan, this is the land which falls to you as an inheritance. The land of Canaan to its boundaries. Now this Boundary section is smaller than originally promised to Father Abraham. That's yet to be realized, and perhaps in our day, may it be so. Come quickly, Messiah Yeshua. But the boundaries of their allotted inheritance was to fall to them. That is, by lot. It wasn't their choice. It was Yah's. Yesterday, we talked about the tribes of Reuben and Gad who took their inheritance. In the kingdom, there will be those who will be receivers and those that will be, or at least tried to be, takers. The takers very well may be viewed along those who have always tried to take the land. Uh, in recent history, we've had the quartet, the U.S., the U.K., the U.N., and the former U.S.S.S.R., uh, Russia to put together their plans for the roadmap to peace. In their minds, they would take from the land of those of Israel and give it to the Palestinians, actually Muslim area, Arabs under that name, and uh, they would divide the land among them for the sake of peace. Yah didn't like that idea. Most of that fell apart. In the last couple of so years, the U.S. has taken on a new approach, drawn new lines, had a fresh idea, and tried to work a deal. The moment we really tried to implement that, COVID-19 shows up on our shores. Maybe Yah is telling us he doesn't approve. The U.N. thought as far back as about 1949 to make Jerusalem an international city. Popes have agreed to it. They thought themselves wise about that. None of that has come about. We await the coming of the end of our journey when Messiah Yeshua takes the throne. 
All Israel finally is at home, and the world will know shalom and peace. Hasten the day, yud heh vav heh, and may we learn to anticipate it. More tomorrow. Until then, shalom.